Greetings fellow painters, today we're taking the fastest and easiest approach to painting an OSL backlight for your tabletop miniature. Since the OSL tutorial will only take a minute, we're going to also demonstrate how to overcome the monotonous flesh color found in the game art by incorporating some color filter techniques and a sludge wash as we paint up Yog sothoth If you'd like to jump straight to the OSL tutorial, you can do so using the timestamp down below. Welcome to Treehane Miniatures. I decided to use a flat dark red primer for this miniature. I feel that this will give a nice dark base for the flesh tones that we're going to apply over most of the model. And yes, I'm still looking for that sponsorship from Rust-Oleum. I'm starting with tanned flesh by the Army Painter through an airbrush heavily thinned with airbrush thinner, using about three drops of thinner for every one drop of paint. And I have my airbrush compressor set to about 22 PSI or one and a half bars. I chose tanned flesh because it is a nice dark flesh color that has a slight pink hue to it, whereas my darker Vallejo flesh tones appear to have a more yellow hue to them, which is not what I'm looking for for this color scheme. I spray the tanned flesh across the right side and front of the model, and I'm covering almost all of the red primer in these areas. If you don't have access to an airbrush, no worries. All of these flesh tones can be applied with a heavy dry brush, slap chop style, covering a little less area with each color in the progression. Next, we will block in some highlight color with Basic Skin Tone by Vallejo, which I prepare in the same way as the tanned flesh for airbrushing. I will spray the Basic Skin Tone from a higher angle and more from the model's right side, so that I do not cover all of the tanned flesh that we just put down. I want it to appear that the natural light source is coming from the model's top right, so we need to focus the highlights in that area. Finally, I hit the high points of the model with some pale yellow by Monument Hobbies using the aforementioned dry brush technique. I'm working pretty fast and loose up to this point, and I'm trying to get a feel for how the final product is going to look. I decide that I don't want this thing to look like a giant glob of pallid flesh. So far this thing looks like something that my dog made six hours after eating a huge roll of raw cookie dough. You lab owners know what I'm talking about. With that in mind, I'm going to experiment with a couple of techniques to try to breathe some life into the model. First up, I'm going to try Sludge Wash with some Noosh by Monument Hobbies. Is Noosh a noun or a verb or both? I'm going to Noosh it with this Noosh it. Noosh is an acrylic medium that is supposed to replicate the quality of oil paints for reductive miniature painting techniques. It's recommended to mix about three drops of Noosh per drop of standard acrylic paint but I'm using Muted Violet Ink by Liquitex, which is much thinner than standard paint, so I'm mixing it at a ratio of one to one. This may have been a mistake, because Noosh is supposed to be workable, meaning easy to remove for up to about 15 minutes, and I am only a couple minutes in, and my mix is already very difficult to work with. This is probably due to the high concentration of ink that I used relative to the Noosh. I was able to use some water to remove the Noosh in some areas, but then this completely removed it, leaving no hint of the wash behind. I'm going to play with it some more and follow Monument Hobby's recommendations on it before giving any final thoughts about the product. Next, I decide to play with some green, yellow, and blue color filters through an airbrush. Again, you can apply these with a standard brush to tint the surface. Just be sure to remove most of the wash from the brush so it doesn't run into the recesses and apply a very thin layer. My idea is to use these filters over the final paint job, but since I'm literally just minutes into this project, I figured this would be a good time to experiment. If I screw it up now, it'll be very easy to cover up and I won't risk ruining any of the work that comes later. I'm using dark blue wash by Vallejo through an airbrush to spray some of Yogg's protrusions from below, using it as a shadow color that will blend the dark purple wash into the flesh tones. The wash is already thin, so I just add a bit of flow improver to the airbrush to help the wash flow through the nozzle. As for the Vallejo green wash, I decide to focus it just on Yogg's midsection, sprayed from the same direction as a light source as a filter. Dark colors are supposed to be slimming, but I don't think this is working for all Yogg here. I use Process Yellow Ink by Dale Rowney for the yellow color filter and focus it mostly on the upper areas of the model. It makes sense to paint your lighter colors on areas where you want to draw the viewer's attention, such as the face and upper chest. I feel like this is successfully adding interest to all of those boring skin tones, so now I move on to adding the detailed highlights to the model, starting with Basic Skin Tone by Vallejo. Things have moved lightning quick up to this point. Now we're going to slow it down and complete the highlights with just two layers of color. The basic skin tone is applied only to the areas that are facing upwards and to the right. I'm making sure not to cover all of the green and yellow color filters that I put down earlier. I draw each stroke across a narrow diameter of each fold or tentacle and pull the stroke towards the light source. 
It's at this point that I decide that there is enough green and yellow showing to break up the monotony of the flesh, so I'm not going to add additional filters at the end of the process. The final highlights are added with a mix of basic skin tone and pale yellow. We're focusing them on the upper areas, especially around the face and head. And then it's time to just wrap up some random details. We're going to use Pure Red by the Armor Painter to base the inside of the belly mouth and the tentacles protruding from it. I like that the Pure Red is somewhat translucent and I'm applying it with short strokes and stippling, not going for complete coverage to let some of the purple wash show through. We're also going to use a Pure Red on all of the smooth tentacles around the face, head, and that big ol' hand, blending it into the basic flesh tone at the base of the tentacles. All of these features will get highlighted with a mix of pure red, basic skin tone, and pale yellow. This mix will keep the red highlights from looking too pink. Next, I'm going to use plain black to darken the eye sockets before using a dot of titanium white to add a glint of light. I'm going to use Vallejo Blue Wash to deepen the shadows in some of the folds and mouths on the front of the model, as well as adding it to most of the back and left side of the model, which I want to appear as the dark side. I'll use yellow ochre to paint all of Yogg's teeth and claws. And so Yogg Sothoth is supposed to be one of the most powerful outer gods in the Cthulhu mythos and supposed to be very impressive. He's the grandfather of Cthulhu, dwarfing him both in power and scale, but I cannot figure out then why he's so easy to beat in the game. Even with all this power, I'm pretty sure that this guy has never defeated even one salad in his entire lifetime. I mean, come on, bro. All of Yogg's teeth and claws will be highlighted with a mix of yellow ochre and pale yellow before getting darkened down a little bit with a Vallejo Umber Wash. The little nubs or moles throughout his body are going to be painted with some Necromancer Cloak by the Army Painter. And then a Vallejo Red Wash will be used to make the skin look distressed around those nubs, all of the teeth, and the area of the face around the nose and mouth. And now it's OSL time. We're going to use Monument Hobby's Black Green Thinned using about three drops of thinner for every one drop of paint. An airbrush is not necessary when creating OSL effects, but it is a lot faster. I spray from below the miniature at an upward angle on the back and left side. This will be the base for our OSL glow. I imagine that the glow is from a toxic pool behind him, or maybe from an interdimensional gate that he just stepped through. Next up, we dry brush with a mix of titanium white ink and titanium white acrylic paint over the black green. Normally, when painting light effects, we will draw each brush stroke towards the light source because more paint will be deposited at the end of the stroke, making the area closest to the light appear brighter. This is not the case when dry brushing. With dry brushing, we want to dry brush away from the light source, catching the edges of the model with our paint in the same way that the light would hit those edges. We want all of our strokes to be within the black green area and just catch the edges and raised bits. And finally, we're going to use Vallejo Fluorescent Green thinned three to one with airbrush thinner sprayed over the titanium white at the same upward angle as the black green. I'm having a lot of fun painting these Elder Gods and Great Old Ones for Cthulhu Death May Die. Be sure to subscribe to the channel because we're going to start painting season three and four as soon as it comes out. For creating OSL effects without an airbrush, check out my Black Go to the Woods video here or continue painting your Cthulhu Death May Die minis with this playlist. Thank you so much for watching.